All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is going to be a one-take editing tutorial on how I do my vertical panoramas. Uh, also, my first tutorial ever. So cool, I guess. Anyways, uh, we're in Lightroom. I have already extracted the files from the SD card out of the drone I'm going to use. As you can see, one, two, three auto bracketed shots merged into one. And then we're going to use one, two, three, four merge photos in Photoshop. We're going to take them over to Photoshop. So once the merge photos are highlighted, what you want to do is photo merge into, excuse me, edit, open as layers in Photoshop. Opening as layers is extremely important. Do not merge this panorama. It's not going to come out. Uh, there's going to be no fill. Uh, it's not going to be as nice. So open as layers. Fortunately, I already have Photoshop open. We're going to save some time. As you can see, I have the layers here. I skipped a step by accident. Sorry about that. So for the image, this is what we wanted. Uh, so we're going to have to go counterclockwise. So I was a little ahead of myself. You can see the layers now all in Photoshop so after they're highlighted what you want to do is go over to image rotation you want to make sure they're going counterclockwise so the top of the photo the top of the horizon is on the left side of your screen alright so we still have all four photos lit up and then we're gonna go over to edit and we're going to auto align the layers. Auto is fine. Perspective can be better. Uh, sometimes you're going to want to play with that. Uh, it's nice to do a little bit of experimenting here and there. So OK. And what this is going to do is it's tricking the software into thinking it's doing a 180 degree uh, horizontal panorama. So just imagine a horizontal panorama looking like this. But instead we have a vertical panorama and you can see it's starting to shape up but even though I changed the camera settings as I tilted down you can see that it didn't you know it, it still is not perfect and droning in itself is an experiment sometimes especially when you're shooting directly into the Sun and then you know your midground here is all shadowed by the light that's not coming over the hill where the train tunnel is and then all the way at the bottom here about 70 to 80 degrees down the town is just starting to get hit by the sun so you're dealing with so many variances in light uh, the software here helps you out quite a bit so we're gonna go up back up to edit and we're gonna blend the layers now this takes a little bit of time so prepare yourself uh, even with an extremely fast computer this can take a few minutes so um, there have been times in the past where I've been working on my laptop that only has 12 gigs of RAM compared to the desktop that has 32 and I've thought that uh, the software uh, locked up Photoshop had locked up a couple times and it didn't it was just taking forever and back when I first started doing these a couple years ago um, I didn't have the computer I do now and it would take uh, some of them uh, so we're only using 12 individual shots here 12 DNGs uh, some of them require 20 or so even on the vertical and that might take 15 minutes 20 minutes a half hour uh, I just be sitting there watching the circle move and that got boring pretty quickly so uh, I guess what I'm getting at is don't think that your computer has locked up when it probably is just working um, that's definitely something that I dealt with in the past for sure oh wow so here we go she's a beauty for sure and you can see that the software had done some auto filling over there we kind of lose this anyways and as you can see uh, this train track didn't get merged properly anyways you can see well, how many roads we have four roads there uh, this 
is part of the train station which is actually all the way over here so you can see that the software does struggle just like human beings do but together we make magic so let's look over here yeah the sky looks pretty good uh, this photo or should I get this edit is different than the one I posted on my story just because I used uh, four more pictures than we did here but you get the gist and then once you got your uh, vertical pano pretty much blended and aligned properly you want to make sure it's still highlighted and then go back up to image and then we're gonna go back clockwise with it this might take a second all right there we go so I mean this is just beautiful I love doing these shots uh, after I exported this from Photoshop I went back on over to Lightroom and played around with the color a little bit got the flare to pop just a little bit and a little bit more color from the sky and clouds there but otherwise it's pretty much ready to go uh, how it how you edit it is up to you um, but you can see that it's pretty much there it just needs to be cropped a little bit get this road out of the mountain and uh, you're ready to roll so if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me uh, this is my first tutorial so I apologize if the audio is a little rough I'm using a new software called what is this OBS and I'm playing around with the microphone settings right now uh, pretty cool software it was free download uh, something for uh, screen recording but apparently uh, is mainly used for game streaming and I didn't even know that so sometimes it's nice to know a gamer here and there for some advice anyways we're done and I hope that you guys have fun with these vertical panoramas it's probably one of my favorite shots although it is quite labor-intensive uh, but as always it's usually worth it so happy flying stay safe and I will talk to you later